of worship. You must have sensed it during the meeting yesterday. This is one of the brilliant apostolic fathers that God has raised in this land. And we must recognize him in the capacity of where God has placed him. A born in and a shining light. Please receive him with that understanding. So with a clapping and shouting ovation, we want to bring to the microphone Dr. David Bukwele. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Wow. Good morning, everyone. I'm just in awe. Just in awe. I think this is where we should be bringing all the ministers. Anybody that is part of this coming wave. It should be Benue. Thank God they've opened your airport. This is where every year, once a year, let all the men of God come here. Let them come here. Maybe God will grant you the grace to also do a few uh, accommodations, maybe come. Because retreats. I'm so grateful that I'm here this weekend. I'm so grateful. Beyond coming to minister, I'm now understanding some of the things Pa Elton said and how, where the thing is headed. I'm, I can see it. I can see it. And I'm also so blessed for the ministry of a psalmist in the house. It's part of prophetic ministry. It's more than just singing. First lady, I honor you and apostle. You and I, we have a long journey to make in the kingdom. And I honor you, sir. Thank you for what you represent, you know, not only before God, but for God's people, not just in Nigeria, but globally. I can understand what it is. That's how God introduces men to me. If he shows me, what they are there, you know, where they stand in his council. And that's what produces my own commitment. It comes by revelation. It comes by revelation. Because I don't want to be part of something God is trying to destroy. Neither should you ever be part of attacking or fighting something God is trying to build. That's the easiest way to destroy your life. Father, we honor you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let your kingdom come. Let it come with its power, with its glory, with its precision. Speak with such clarity this morning that even a baby will understand. Speak to such degree that even the simple will gain wisdom. Bring divine order. And cause your purpose to take hold of us. Let's not just hear it. Let it take hold of us. Infusing into our life the capacity to manifest it. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. I got a few messages after last night. And one of them had to do with some men of God uh, had been healed. One was from Kogi State, and he was lying down in, you know, when the word of God hit, the word of God came, and then he got up from that place free. Please join me to say good morning, sir, to Papa. Okay. Yesterday, I identified three principal spirits that are enemies of revival. So this morning, I'm going to, by the grace of God, take care of a second one. And this second one is the spirit of Absalom. Uh, It was identified in our reading as the spirit of Korah, the one that leads a rebellion against leadership. 
under the leadership, the prophetic leadership of Moses, he steered an army of 250 priests and led a, a, a rebellion. Of course, you know that God also did a strength in the earth, opened up and swallowed that man. But you need to know that spirit. You need to know how to identify it. Um, just before I read Psalm 144. So I wrote a book on it, very simple book. Um, and they brought a thousand copies. It's pastors and leaders and those called by God that I want to get it first. The reason, <laughs> if you don't know how to handle this, These are assassins from hell. And part of the way you're going to protect your people from this stuff is to start exposing it. Because all demonic activities functions through deception. And if you don't expose deception, more people will be victims of it. So, uh, you can get the book outside. I'm not here to sell books. They are actually... Three of our resources, <laughs> I wanted them. I promised our pastor that I would bring them. One has to do with principles of uh, sonship that I'm going to talk about. So in dealing with just uh, Absalom, one is to look at it from the diagnostic perspective and expose it. I don't really have much time, so I won't do that. I will, I will just go to what you need to install to prevent and cure it. So that's what I'll do. It's just like Jezebel, it has the diagnostic and the cure. So I didn't do much on the diagnostic. I did a few yesterday <laughs> because, um, but I, I need to add one more advice on that Jezebel subject. It will be from Revelation chapter 2 verse 20 where Jesus dealt with it in the New Testament church. I will give you one or two advice. Yeah, notwithstanding, he commended his church for all the wonderful things they were doing, but notwithstanding, I have a few things against you because you sufferers, the word is permit, allow. <laughs> that woman, Jezebel. <laughs> Before I read further, I want you to know that Jezebel is a spirit, it's not a woman, but it's feminine in its operation. Is feminine. Of the satanic system, Satan is to counterfeit the Father. The Antichrist is to counterfeit Jesus. Uh, my sister, uh, you know, I, I don't want to really mention anything. I've, I've collected my own book. I've ordered my people to buy it. But please, make sure you submit to him or don't just use the platform to sell, but make sure you submit to it. So whenever you do any project, you send it ahead. Let there be a review panel. Because the Bible says, let two or three prophesy. Let others judge. For those who want to be safe and sound. Don't be the one to review. Let others do. In academics, it's called peer review system. You can't become a professor by just coming up with anything. There are other people that will judge your thesis and analyze it. And God put that for the security of the prophetic. <laughs> uh, the dragon counterfeits the father. <coughs> the beast counterfeits Jesus. The false prophet counterfeits the Holy Spirit. But there is a place of the mother in God's divine system, the place of the woman. Women have a special role in the army of God, even in the, you see the pattern in the family. So the kingdom of darkness counterfeited that with mother. 
the mystery Babylon. I have done my studies. She is more deadly than the other three. Nigerian church, because the mantle has shifted, the ark is now in Africa, and this country has been raised by God to do what Britain did in the time of Reformation, to do what America did in the time of the Pentecostal movement, to be the one at, that will be at the forefront of this last day's move of God. We must study what destroyed the move of God in Europe. We must study what is driving God out of the American system and church. It is a mystery, Babylon. And we must not make that same mistake. That spirit is a marine operational that is up doing all this. That spirit that is behind that whole thing, it takes the form of a woman. That spirit, that spirit, is the same spirit that started this Babylon system as far back. That's why I pointed you guys. The first Jezebel is not the one you read in the Bible. I mean, the one you read by the name Jezebel. That spirit was one that created Babylon with her, her husband, Nimrod. The first time there was a, an, an organized rebellion against God. That Nimrod spirit is what is called the Antichrist. That's what is about to return. It's that same spirit. There are no new devils. So. Now it's going to appear again in another human form from Europe and lead a global rebellion such that has not been seen against God. But you see, if you read Revelation 17 and 18, the mystery Babylon has said, that lady rides on the beast. The two systems, it's a, a mother-son alliance, a, a woman-man alliance. All the nations have been polluted by the mysteries of our pollution. All types of sexual perversion and abomination. She's the one behind it. You see this pornography industry. You see this entertainment industry as you know it. You see this nonsense, abomination that Hollywood is churning up. She's the one behind it. You see all these things happening with fashion industry. With some... If you see anybody that claims to be a woman of the cloth, a woman of God, she can't even organize how she dresses. She goes to borrow garments from Babylon to minister in God's pulpit. Remove that person from office. Remove that person before your whole church is polluted and messed up. But there are, because it's also a spirit of manipulation, if you people are so whatever, they can adapt. One got into the parlor. He said her assignment was kumui. Because the assignment is assassinate the prophet, assassinate the apostles. Oh, maybe I should show you. Maybe I should show you. You know, you, know, you know, if I give you this information, some of you might be surprised. The first Jewish man to be thrown into the furnace of fire was Abraham. You see that thing that happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? And he was thrown there with his brother. The brother died there. That's why a lot of people don't know why God said, leave your father's house and go, and he took Lot. It was, Lot was the son the man left behind. His brother. There are three boys that his father gave birth to. Go read Genesis. Three boys. He was thrown in with his brother. When he began, this ministry of Abraham did not start in Canaan. That instruction to that land of Shina where he was raised is where Nimrod was. The king of the land when Abraham was doing ministry was Nimrod. And this woman, seminarist. And what this one advised the husband to do to Elijah is what she advised to do to Abraham. They threw him into the fire. Okay. 
I'm going to say something now, okay? Because somebody say, uh, Pastor David, where did you get the document? Where do you get this information? There is a book that the Bible recommended by itself. I don't believe in extra biblical literatures. Except the one the Bible itself recommends. There are two books he quotes, the Bible quotes. One is the book of Enoch. You should read it. It's the other book of Revelation. Mm. Every time you read in the Bible, Enoch, did this one, the seven from Adam, quoted this. Where did, are they getting all those information? When you get the book, you see where they were quoting. The Bible quoted it more than 13 times. So it's a second book the Bible quoted and recommended twice. It's the book of Joshua. Now, I didn't say give it the same authority as the scripture. Hmm? But why should you be reading her book instead of reading the people who were there? Why should you buy my book? Why should you buy Benny Hinn's book, who was not there, living 2,000 years after? Instead of reading the one, and it is your scripture that is recommending it. Go and get it. That book is called The Other Genesis, Joshua. Because you see, the account of creation has no second record. And everything we are to take as doctrine must have at least amount of two or three witnesses. When you get it now, you just put it side by, you will see your Genesis, everything in Genesis, you will see it there. But sometimes it throws a little more light. I will give you an example. When the sons of God slept with the daughters of men and they created, theologians are arguing whether the sons of God are descendants of uh, uh, Seth and the daughters of men are descendants. When you read it, it tells you plainly they are angels. Of course, if they are not angels, how come their products were giants? Can you get an unbeliever and mix with a, a child of God and create giants? They won't. No giant will call. So that book explained that because Genesis tells us, Abraham, leave your father's house. The book explains why God gave him that instruction. It was persecution. Nimrod was after him. He has been dealing with idolatry and confronting the same thing Elijah was confronting. You know? He was trying to bring a revolution in Babylon long before Daniel tried it. And finally, they threw him into fire. God preserved him. It was after he came to fire. He said, oh yeah, carry your wife and order and leave this place and go to the land where he was. He was separating him from an idol idolatrous foundation. Even his father was into that. But of course, Lord's father died in the fire. So Abraham felt obligated to raise Lord. You see, just that extra information was very important. Because let me tell you, if the whole gospel was only Mark, and they didn't give us four documents, do you know where Mark started his, his account? Mark chapter 1. With baptism of John. Baptism of John. We don't know about in Gebra, We don't know about Mary. We don't know about Joseph. We don't know about the birth of Christ. We don't even know about John's parents. How, who was he? Mark chapter 1. Later, John did baptize with, in the wilderness. Preaching the baptism of repentance. For the remission of sin. Verse 5. And there went out unto him, we are in chapter 1, no? all the land of Judea and, and there of Jerusalem. And they were baptized of him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Verse 6, and John was clothed with camel's hair. Then verse 7. Then they told us what he was preaching. Verse 8. Verse 9. Can you see? It came to pass in those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of what if this is, if the other books were missing and this is what we have. Do you know how preachers will fill up where Jesus came from? Some will say he dropped from heaven. Some will say um, he was not born of any man. Some will read about Melchizedek and say he has no father or mother. That must be it. This one too. There will be a lot of room to fill up whatever we like with the gap. Then John himself, since he was Elijah, oh, we will start pre preaching that he dropped from heaven. He must have ridden, rode another chariot to come. And when he dropped, he just went to the wilderness and started. 
That's why you need a month or two or three witness. You need the other, every record. For example, creation account. Where is the second account? You read the book of Joshua, you see. I recommend that with all authority because it's the Bible that recommended it. Okay, okay, okay. Show where Joshua fought and he said, let the sun and the moon stand still. So in case of anybody quoting me tomorrow, don't go reading extra biblical document. The Bible recommends this one. That's why I can point it out. The sun and the moon stood still. The moon stayed until the people have avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written where? Why is it telling you if it's not important for you to go and read it? Is not this written where? Okay, let me show you one more. David said, how are the mighty fallen and the weapons of war destroyed? Show it to them. So he wrote a bow that Saul died king of Israel. He wrote a bow that says psalm, a song. And he taught them to teach all Israel this psalm. Go down to what I'm talking about. He said to teach all And he also begged them to teach the children of Judah the use of this bow. Behold, it is written where? Is it not two or three evidence you need to know that something is being established? Why is scripture repeating it twice? When you go there, you see, you see some, just the same account. But sometimes there is an extra information that is very interesting. Let me give you an example. I used to think that the principle that God starts using people from the time they were either children or teenagers has been violated by two examples. Moses. That the call of Moses started at 80. And the call of Abraham started at 75. No. Abraham knew God as far back as the age of 14. That idolatry of his family, he rejected it. He began to say... And when Nimrod wanted to kill him as a baby, they took him to Noah. It was Noah that trained Abraham and his son, Shem. So if you want to see, there has not been a break in transmission from Adam to Christ. Not once. There are times people think that maybe, you know, like they talk about the 400 years that God was silent, but there has never been any time he was silent. So, after the flood, how did this thing now come to Abraham? No, that's where he went, learned training, and then when he matured, he now returned back to begin his ministry. He started his ministry in Babylon. That's where he raised the 318 trained servants that he later fought with. It was when he was living, he took all of them with him. That's where he also got Eliezer, the chief servant of his house. It's there, they were his converts. We see it in the book of Joshua. Then when persecution broke, so God now said, leave. So he took his father. They got to halfway to Param, you know, and settled there. And God came again and said, what I told you to get to uh, is Canaan, not here. And then he now made the journey and got there. And then the rest of the story started. So I read about Moses again. The same thing. So I can tell you with all authority, God's method of raising, it starts when you are young. It starts when you are young. Just like you see in the life of Jesus, in the life of most of them were either young men or teenagers. And then God builds that. At the maturity state, it starts for maximum use of the individuals. But the work and the processing actually starts early. Especially for the Jewish people. Some of them as babies, as children. So because 
the, the Genesis gave information about Nimrod, edited, just about the Tower of Babel and all that. Ah, when you read Josh, you see, the guy is the one that invented occultism, invented idolatry after the flood again. That brought all kinds of immorality into the earth again. So when the Bible talks about mystery Babylon, even though he's giving us a revelation of the role this woman will play, but he also wants us to go and study the ancient Babylon to understand what you are dealing with. Because this thing is reinvention of an ancient. It's not a new thing. Some people think that this gay thing and some of this nonsense that the West is pointing at are new. They are not new. Uh, my brother at the projection stage, bring out the, f the 10 points of her, uh, um, Alice Belly. This, uh, you know, um, to give you an example of a Jezebel, is a woman that took the Bible out of the schools, the woman that, if you see all the different things that they've done to bring the West to where it is now. We in Nigeria need to be careful. Women ministry is authorized in scripture, but it is a woman that is under covering. If an Esther is not submitting to Mordecai, I'm not going to listen to that trash she's talking. You won't, can't get me. Anytime I see a woman, you see, there is an order God put after the fall for the protection of the church and the protection of his mandate. Let nobody who understands divine order ever violate it. She must operate under covering. The head of every man is Christ. The head of the, of, of the woman is the man. And the man in question is her husband. If she is not married, her father, whether spiritual or natural, If her father is not saved, she must have a spiritual father. If she's not on that covering, then the dragon will make her a breakfast. So while we're talking about future books and all the other ones, even the ones you've written, and let there be peer review. If the academic institution does it, the medical institution does it, and that's how what they bring out, we are safe. When I enter an aircraft, it's not made in China. I can be sure. I can close my eyes and sleep and know that it will get me to where I'm going. <laughs> Show me that thing for scrutiny. So that if people throw, put their trust in it, they can be sure. Okay, Revelation 2, verse 20. So that I will go to my assignment today. Today is Babylon. I mean, is, is, is um, Absalom. Okay, no, no, okay, okay, yeah. Look at what one woman did, one Jezebel did with America. Yeah, look at the policies she brought, and they pushed it into government, raised sons of Jezebel to now make it ordinance, and today the world is there. Okay, when she did this, in the early 60s, it was still a Christian nation. America was a Christian nation. Most of these other places, they were all in church. But look at it. Number one, take God and prayer out of the education system. Reduce parental authority over children. Destroy the Judeo-Christian family structure or the traditional Christian family structure. That's why if you go to the West, the woman is the head of the home. I don't know what you will now say. We can't say as Christ is the head of the church. So now in England, they have to now remove Father God. They are now making it a genderless. So even our Lord's Prayer, the Church of England is no more our Father which art in heaven. It's now our genderless God who is in heaven. To make room for Babylon is that lady, that lady, that lady. 
is the spirit of Jezebel. That's what is destroying the West. That's what one of the biggest in Nigerian church must face, and the African church. Our African presidents are beginning to challenge some of the pollutions coming from Babylon. Resisting it, some of the things are trying to introduce into Africa. Let the church not be the one to lag behind. Number four, if se- uh, yeah, make sex free and then make abortion legal and make it easy. You can imagine the system that somebody is proposing all this. How it sounded like I, but we are there today. Make divorce easy and legal. Free people from the concept of marriage for life. When you are tired, just leave. One woman. But number, six, number six. Make homosexuality the alternative life. So as you are destroying God's system of marriage, you'll be giving them another system. Women and women can now, men and men, even with animals and other. And the West is there now. And it's coming in here. Once Babylon or Jezebel emasculates you as a pastor, all sorts of this abomination will start rising inside that place, even though you still call it God's name. So they are attempting to neutralize a prophetic and apostolic force or a move of God. Then if you cannot neutralize it, then they will come out with threats and attack. And I need to say this, because when we say it, you think it's a spirit. It doesn't only function through women. Women are predominantly the instrument, but it functions through men. You see, some of these apostolic false apostolic ministries that you see sometimes apostle confronting, that's the spirit driving it. So if you're a female, you don't have a covering, one of them will get into your life and pollute you and mess up your life. Pass that jam or infection into your system because it's immorality. It's immoral. They will prophesy, but they have no moral boundaries. They have no moral boundaries or distance. And usually, any woman without a covering will be a victim of the male version of it. It's just a matter of time. They are preaching. Some of them are married. They are sleeping around. If you see what is going on. So if you meet their male whatever, you see them f- operating the so-called prophetic, but they are very loose morally. Some of them started well, but the marine kingdom has recruited them. You see this thing about fake miracle, going somewhere to get something so that you can is Jezebel that is behind it. He's, he, she's also into religion, big time into religion. She has her churches, she sponsors. You want to be pulling crowd without paying the price of prayer? You want lying wonders? She's the one. Yeah, so he said, debase arts, make it wrong mad. You know what is art? Arts and culture, music industry, and movies and all that. Make it wrong cre- Oh, it has already gone completely mad. I don't even know what is happening with our censorship board in Nigeria because before there are certain lying across, they will shut down that movie or shut down. Now it's like, Use media to promote and change mindset to get the society to accept it. Okay, when you print it out, there are things she wrote under each point, you know, how to actually implement each of these lines. So apart from these ones that are one one line, if you get the document, it's in the internet. And then create interfaith movement in order to remove this idea that it's only Christ. Cease this. And then today, get government to make all these laws and get the church to endorse them. And today, a 
Okay, but the one she's doing in the world, trying to destroy society, it's not the worst. It's the one of entering inside the church and the family. Destroy God's divine order in the home and destroy God's divine order in the church. And that's the one that causes the whole system to collapse, the whole society. So Revelation chapter 2 verse 20. Okay, yeah. Revelation 2 20. I, I need to get out of this. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because you are loud. That word suffers. There are things Paul wrote. I told the curriculum for New Testament age. There are things he wrote about order in how ministries function and the proper place for women. Oh. The more time I'm giving to this is eating up my time for the other. But let me, let me, let me give you something. I want to just show you what the divine order looks like at home. The man, the father, is the root. It's also what you call foundation. So the mother is the building. So that word family means father's house. If the church becomes matriarchal, you have bought Babylonian system. The church is patriarchal. It is father God, not mother God. Father God. God oppressed through the patriarchal system, Satan oppressed through the matriarchal system. That's what they call Jezebel or Babylon. The serpent did not go through Adam, he went through Eve. So let me show it with, to you with trees. When you take a seed, and plant in the soil to create the foundation that will carry the whole tree. What you have established is Adam. You just created a man. That's what God did in the garden, created a man. Then, but you need to get a family. So you need the wife. And where did God go to get the wife? He went to the man he has created, opened his side, and brought out the woman. So when you put a seed in the ground, the seed opens and the tree comes out. That's the woman. You always know the woman or the mother because she's the one that bears fruit. The fruit bearing arm is the woman. That's what you call a tree. Anytime you see a tree, you are dealing with a, a she. But what is under holding that tree? When the wind is blowing. When anything, and when the children come and you see a tree can have 2,000 fruits, but something is holding it so that the whole thing does not grow. That's the man. The father is foundation. Everything stands on him. So if Eve ate the forbidden fruit and Adam did not, the human family will not fall. Only one person will fall. Did you hear what I just said? But the moment Adam ate, the whole of humanity till fell because it is the father that carries genealogy. He is the foundation of the family. Everybody is in his loin. So when the tree down comes up, watch, the mother now gets pregnant, fertilization happens, and then fruits come. That one that holds the fruit is the mother, but the fruits that she holds are the children. So you notice it's the same mother that will now get pregnant, fertilized by the, and then produce the children. In God's plan for marriage, it is one foundation, one tree, but many what?
Now watch again, because I'm, I'm about to teach something about the father-son order on the, uh, the Absalom. Notice again that the tree must stay with the root. But the children stay temporarily. The fruit stay when they are at infants, they are babies. They stay when they are teenagers. They become fruit, but they are not ripe. Hmm? You know, teenagers are no more babies, but they are not yet adults. Some of them want to start having sex. No, you, are, you can't. You are not ripe yet. But finally, the fruit gets ripe. And when it gets right, the divine order is he must detach from the parents to go and start a new family. So some will fall around where the parents are and create their own new family. So after a while, instead of a tree, you now have a forest. And that's how Adam was supposed to populate the earth. But there are others, the law of dispersion will pick them up. Some of them flood some of them wind, some of them, some other things, and take them to distant places. And when they get there like coconut, you've wondered why the whole beach side, all the way to North America, South America, Australia, everywhere, coconut. The water, the water. Some of those coconut fall, and they fall in dispatch, and that carries them to distance, some of them to other continents, some of them to other countries, and find that the wave will drop them on the sand, and they will bear fruit and start there. So even if you're a Joseph, you leave your parents' house, you get to Egypt, you extend your family line and DNA. So in the principles we're going to teach you about sonship now, what cures the, the Absalom system? A son abides in the house forever. The father-son relationship is eternal. Even if there is a release and you are prayed for to start a new ministry, you keep submitting to your, you keep recognizing your father. You don't go and change fathers. That is madness. That is virus. That is Absalom spirit. Just because apostle prayed for you to go to whatever does not mean. Then when you come to look, he said, you know, uh, my, my father in the Lord, it depends on where. And when I'm in Lagos, it's Pastor Adeboe. When I'm near Canaan land, it's Bishop Oyedepo. When, whenever I come here, it's Apostle or, 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 or Roman. You, there is a virus in your head. <laughs> I don't live in the same city as my father. My father lived you know, where he raised us. I traveled to another state to find my destiny. But I know who my father is. I've made great men of God there. I mean, great professors there. I've made uh, worthy men. I admire people like Dan Gote for their money. My father doesn't have as much money. But guess what? I still bear my father's name, and I know who my father is. He doesn't need a, to be a professor to be my father. The spirit of Absalom, powered by Jezebel, goes against the divine order. And because we are in a media age, social media, people are hailing you. You keep going. A fatherless generation never returns back from the battlefront. Be careful, you young men, of those girls that will come to you to give you a special word. You know, you are now bigger than your pastor. Don't you know he's even depending on you? He's using you. Be careful, Jezebel is talking to you. They instigate almost every rebellion you see in the kingdom. She's always behind it. If that one is wrong, she will pretend that she is prophesied because she, she also appraises sorcery. I saw you in a vision. I saw crowds. And the Lord said, this is a special apostle. What I've put on you is even your father's anointing is junior. Nobody can be greater than his roots. You might be the one bearing fruit. Oh. You might be the one growing tall. But something is holding you. Hey. 
That's why they say the sins of the father follow the thought. You know why they don't refer to the mother? Because it's a generational, it's root foundational issue. Women are gates. I don't want to address that. They are incubators. Whatever you put there, they will incubate it and bring it out for you. But the seed comes from the father. So you see, when I put a seed in the ground, the ground will incubate it and give me a tree. That's why, because the earth is a mother, not a father. Go to America, go to Australia. You must know who your source is. Father is Abba. Greek people call it pata. It means source and sustainer. Don't pick the revelation and run off and disconnect. Because just like the relationship between the vine and the branch, after a while, you're going to run off, run dry. You see that that relationship that bets for it, <laughs> that relationship also sustains. Okay, let me now mention this so that I can go. After a very good friend of mine lost his wife in a ghastly plane crash. Good man. Godly man. I went through a period of retreat to ask questions and then finally I had to go back to the fathers. I'm from Priorities lean. And, and he said, this is a divine order God put. Anytime it's violated. Because I was already programming Pastor Sarah to follow that pattern. It's the American pattern. I was trying to create a superstar with her, another whatever. And God said, that is not how we plan this to work. See the principle that establishes the home. The same principle establish the church. The same principle establish the human family. The same principle is what God used to establish the universe. God creates things in pairs. He first creates the principal one. That is the one that to function as the father. Then he goes to the womb of that one and bring out the second one that will function as his helpmate. Watch the divine order. He creates them in pairs. He creates the one that will be the source and the sustainer. Then he creates the other one that will be the image of that first one. I think you should show it. Is it on 1 Corinthians chapter 11? The woman is the glory of the man and the man is the glory of God. So watch what God did here. Since he had no Beginning and ending. He was already there. He's the principal. The source of everything. He created another thing to be the reflection of himself. And that's Adam. This is called the law of reflection or the reflection principle. So Adam is to be like a helpmate to the almighty God. And what is his mandate? Rule the earth while God rules the heavens. And what you are to do on earth is take the glory of God, reflect it on the universe, and everything will align. Now he has Adam on earth. He needs to give Adam a helpmate. So he creates somebody else to be in the image of Adam while Adam is in the image of God. I want you to watch the order. If you want to understand marriage, 
Look at it from the sun and the moon. He creates the sun, the principal. He creates another like the sun to reflect the image of the sun. So that's why the second one never has the seed. That's why no woman carries a seed. It's her relationship with the man that gets her pregnant. That's why the moon never produces light. Because if you don't do this, there will be confusion and disorder. Because you create two heads. There is no order. And kingdom has to do with order and government. God is not creating a woman as a slave. He's creating a king and a queen. And they are to have two different realms of dominion. So he said, let the greater light, that's Genesis 1, you know, in verse 14, after he created it. Let the greater light rule the day and the lesser light rule the, the night. Both are rulers. They are both king and queen. But one submits to the other. And that thing you call submission is not like you are being made silent. To any, it's a positioning that allows you to reflect what you are supposed to reflect. The glory of the sun. The glory of the sun is what the moon is supposed to reflect. Show that uh, uh, first, first Corinthians 11, you know, the, the man is the glory of God, why the woman is the glory of the man. For the man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is what? You are not supposed to reflect Pastor Adeboe. You're supposed to reflect this man. You're not supposed to reflect T.D. Jakes. That's not what you are called. If not, you go and get married to him. You're not supposed to reflect any other person. Pastor David, you're supposed to reflect this man. Just like you're supposed to bear his children, you're supposed to reflect his glory. It's his messages that you preach. But you don't give it a contest that the children can get it. Exactly what is happening with the Trinity. You heard Jesus said, I do not speak of myself. I came not to seek my own glory. Everything he talks about the Father. That is that position that is called submission. When is the turn of the Holy Spirit? He said the Holy Spirit too cannot speak of himself. You know, they have will. They can do what Lucifer did, but they can't. It is what he hears that he speaks. That's what you are supposed to be doing. But that one Holy Spirit, how many people did Jesus reach? How many? When he was alive? How many ministers did he leave behind? 12 plus 70. Actually, 120 people maximum. Look at what the Holy Spirit has done. 2.57 billion people. But yet, everything is reflecting is Christ. That is the law through which the kingdom advances. Everybody wants to be founders. Everyone wants to say, I got it direct from heaven. Shut up your mouth, my friend. You don't understand how the things of God work. It's your pride. It won't allow you. So that's what a queen is supposed to do to reflect the glory of the king. When she comes out with her majesty, you know who her husband is. is it? So you can imagine during the time of Esther, that law was broken. They called Queen Vasheti to come and display the glory. Of, and she insulted the king, refused the invitation, disgraced the king publicly with all the guests. The elders came and said, if we don't do something about this, all the women in the, because they are going to reflect her glory. The women are looking, that's the first lady. All the women will start doing this to their husband. We need to remove her and bring a woman that understands the law of reflection. That's how Esther came in. It's not a weaker thing. It's just structure. In marriage, God is the chairman of the board. You know, it's a threefold God. The husband is the CEO. The mother is the COO, the chief operation officer. The chief operation officer gets her directive from the CEO. But she's the one that helps implement it. Once she is in order, all the children lines up. 
Now, every time there is a disorder in this system, the moon comes and blocks the sun. She's supposed to take an angle that allows her to submit to the sun, to receive the sun rays, and that angle also allows her to reflect that light to the universe, and that's how she gives light in the night. Anytime she takes a different position, as she is rotating, she finally assumes that, that blocks the sun. What does she send to the earth? Eclipse, darkness. Anytime a woman disobeys this order, what happens to the family? Darkness. She says a distorted image, and the children are confused about their father because is this Holy Spirit that is helping you to know Jesus? Is this Holy Spirit that is revealing the father? And that's what a wife is supposed to do give the children the correct perception of their father. When he corrects them, they are confused. They don't. He said, No, 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 that's part of his job. That's what he's supposed to do to produce people that will be greater than him. Don't react like that. Don't talk like that about your father. This is what God expects him to do. And when you grow, that's what you're going to do. It's not you call them and say, you see what I've been telling you? That man is wicked. <laughs> is that not how he talks to me? You people are not there, so you don't know what I've been going through in this house. So she turns her own submission, her own whatever, into and gives it another image. That's how Jezebel's overthrow the family. You know, I told you about the book of Joshua. Let me quote one more thing from it. The founder of the tribe of Judah, his name is Judah, one of the sons of Jacob. The Bible said two of his sons were wicked. Have you noticed that? The first one was wicked, he died. And there is a young woman that was brought to him to marry. So no child, he dies. So they promised that woman to the second one. But that second one was also wicked. Instead of raising son for the brother, because you're supposed to, the first child will go replenish your brother's lineage, then the other ones are yours. That's the Jewish system. They don't believe in closing a lineage. He will not do it. He will enjoy sex. When it's time, he will spill the seed on the floor. God killed him. Two sons, wicked. So they now told the girl, wait till the last one that is much younger grows up. But when you now read it in the book of Joshua, you understand what made them wicked. Judah went to marry the daughter of an Amorite king. The nations that God told them not to marry, Genesis recognized that. It's there in Genesis. But he didn't tell us what now transpired. He said this woman began to turn these sons against their father. That's Jezebel in the home. Turn the heart of the boys against their father. So they were rebellious to their father. They would not honor their father. And that also led. So when it was also time for. So God slaughtered them. Because honor your father and mother is the Lord that produces longevity. And this honor leads to shock. And two of them died. So when you read the Bible said they are wicked. You don't know. The, that Joshua explains to you what was going on. And it was hard. I told this one, don't, don't get her pregnant. Too. I have a better woman for you. It's your father trying to force you people to marry this one woman. I have, and she went and arranged women for her own place. Notice David had a son that gave him problem, Absalom. He married all the other women rightly. But he, one day he saw one of the daughters of his a king, a nearby king, one of those nations, and married. It was that one that gave birth to Absalom. So notice one time Absalom caused some problems. They disciplined him. Do you know what he did? He ran back to his mother's place. And the king there gave him protection and was nurturing him until Joab and some other people pleaded for clemency for him to return. But by the time he returned, they had finished training him in their culture of rebellion. So he now came back to stage a military coup. Against his own father. There is a relationship between Jezebel and Absalom or Jezebel and the beast. Anytime you see a rebellion, there's one woman behind it. There's one woman. If you don't find a woman, you find a hit of her. A friend that is offended, but he won't tell you, so you book a reconcile. He will go and instigate the sons. So 
So there's a proper place for women in ministry. If you look at the sun and the moon, you see it. And when that order is violated, whether it's in the church or in the society, that, that's the kind of darkness you're seeing on the Western nations. The head of every home is a woman. The vice president in the home are the children. They're untouchable. You can't correct them in the West. Then the man, I don't know what title they created for them. So that's the collapse. That's the matriarchal system, the collapse of the Western society. And that's what they want to impose on Africa. Some of you here, if you have not established the divine, divine order well in your system, in your heart, and in your home, don't carry your wife and go to Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot may escape, but he didn't come out with his children and his wife. He only came out with two unmarried daughters. All the other ones, gone. Babylon swallowed them, including his wife. Some of you that really believe in marriage, in the name of being an economic migrant, without establishing the order very well, you carry, carry your whatever, go to Babylon. You know, Daniel survived, but he was just focusing on himself. He wasn't married. He was an Enoch. So if you're going to carry family, consider where you're going to raise children. Consider your marriage, the outcome. Abraham succeeded in such foreign lands with all the attempt made on his wife and his kings coming to. Because that lady, mm -mm, she so submitted to Abraham. Even when Abraham told her, he said, for my safety, say your man. she did that part. And be, because any time you are in your place, God can intervene. God will not intervene when you come out of the divine order. You can't pray. He won't listen. He won't listen. No. He won't. He won't. There is no covering on your head. You can wear all this head tie. Wear the ones, you know, that touch the ground. As long as you are not under your husband's covering, there is nothing on your head. Because this is supposed to be a symbol of authority. You see that one that went into deeper life? Went in because they are very tricky. Snakes. Just walked her way in. Into Kumuyi's house. Walked her way in. Into helping to provide food. But oh, this is a man of God. A man of holiness. A man of prayer. The same man spotted her. He wanted to cut off Elijah. So that the whole thing can die. If, so there are some of them that are so good. If you will like tie her, they will tie it. Wear mags, they will wear it for you. Snake is snake. Come in there too. <laughs> but what but every now and then she's now working in your office. What you've been noticing that you're getting flashes. Every other place you are found, when you walk into that place, you get flashes, seduction of immorality. Sack that person, locate that person and remove him. If you are not going to sack, relocate. Find another department. Because persistence is stronger than resistance. Every time you are resisting, you are resisting, you are resisting. Let me show you another thing in the book of Joshua. Another thing in the book of Joshua added. Story of Joseph, exactly the same thing. But he said, why the temptation was going on in Potiphar's house every time the husband travels? That young man is in trouble. So it got to a point, he now started putting Kayamata in his food. He said, that New Testament Jesus taught the church to eat food, sacrifice to what? I do. You think today is about going to uh, Buddha or whatever. No, no, no. It is. So this, the, the additional thing that Joshua added, the same account, then this guy was taught well by his father. He would over his food. The thing wasn't catching him. When the woman saw that even the sorceries of Egypt were not catching this boy,
Joseph now declared a fast. He said, because one day she will come and take me by force. He said, God of my father, please deliver me. I'm a slave, so I can't run away. I, I will have gone, but I'm, I'm a born servant here. I can't, and I'm, every time, Ogatra, this woman is on me to sleep with her. Please help me. And she will open her breast, and she was very pretty. Joshua explained that her beauty was something else. He said, deliver me. Do you know how God now answered the prayer? When she went on this stratum, because she now said to Ju Joseph, tried to preach to her a number of times. He said, oh, okay, I now know the answer to your problem, Joseph. Since you people will not sleep with another person's wife, you people Jews, I will poison my husband, and you and I can now. That one said, I will tell your husband. It frightened her. It rebuked her. You know, did something. So, Joseph now said, I'm fasting. God, get me out of here. Do you know what God did to answer his prayer? To send him to prison. That's what you were seeing as uh, whatever. But it was actually an answer to his prayer. So, God moved him to prison. Where he's going to meet the next contact that will lead him to the palace. What is it that these Jewish patriarchs, parents, put in their children that by the time they turn 17, their moral strength is so firm, like look at Daniel in Babylon. He, he vowed not to eat pollute himself with all this kingdom. What is this in a boy of 17 years in Egypt with such a pretty seductive mother? Oh, you need to read Joshua. Joshua said he offered Joseph all types, money, everything, because that's what Jezebel does. Young men and women called of God. You see, if you look at the seven major areas, how this spirit capture men of God, women of God, you notice that one of them is through traveling, traveling ministry. Be careful this type of structure you build around yourself in this so-called traveling ministry. You know, I remember my first time in South Africa. And uh, a friend of mine invited me. That's my first time, and you know, and I landed. He put me in Protea Hotel. All my bags went up, and I was chatting with him. And you know, at the reception, he had some things for us to eat. We came down from the flight. We ate, and all. That. By the time I finished, he was now driving off. So I, I went up to my room. I was having the key. Moment I opened my door. Ah, see this lady. She has already opened all my box. She was ironing on these, ironing ever. And she's bent ironing them, and she is half dressed. So I stood at the door. I said, Excuse me, who are you? He said, Ah, Pastor, I'm the one that will look after you this weekend. <laughs> it, do you know how they speak, the South Africa? Pastor. He said, I'm the one that will look after you this weekend. So I'm just trying to iron your. Is there any other thing that you need? I said, are you from the hotel? He said, no, I'm from the church. I didn't see to argue. I ran after the man. Because there are two security systems they have, these things. And you need to put your card before. And thank God, by the time I got to the second one, he has no passed. So I was screaming and the hotel people were coming out. What is wrong with this Nigerian man? So, but by the time he has passed the other one, he saw me on the, the, the mirror and stopped. So I came, I said, I said, there's a lady in my room ironing. That, uh, he said, yes, we sent her. I said, no, 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 that's, how, that's not how we operate, please. That's not how we operate. You need to come and take her. I don't want to take her, my take, Come and carry her by yourself. <laughs> he said, is that Pastor David? What is wrong with you? She's going to look after you this way. I said, no, 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 no. We don't operate like that. No, 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 no. No. Come and take her. If you want to give me, give me guys to assist me. If not, I can take care of myself. What is it? Hotel has ironing service. I will pay for it. I don't have a problem. 
It's like that after that, everywhere I go, there must be guys ahead of. The Bible says Jesus traveled from city to city, but the 12 were with him. Okay, show it to them, Luke 18, so that you see how to do your traveling. Luke 18. Verse 1. Please, fast. No, no, Luke 8, I mean. Verse 1. Verse 1. And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city. And you see, he was moving. That's in Tinnanian ministry. Preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. Everyone said, and the 12. <laughs> were with him. There is no place you will see me on the surface of the earth. Usually, 90 something percent, Pastor Sarah is there. And then, my 12. It might not be 12 men, but there's always men. So, a lady can cook the food, you can't bring it. But it's my guys that will collect it and bring it. You can't come to my room. Who are you? It's not possible. Who is who sent you? I said we need Modesto, uh, Macaulay Covenant. This place must become the center where we now train the quality of men that will drive this move to the ends of the earth. We need a Macaulay Covenant like, the, like, like uh, uh, Billy Graham and his men made their own Modesto Covenant so that these mandates can last. It does not matter where. Uh, you people don't have money to buy her ticket. I buy hers. Just that I'm coming here. At least 12 men came here. I don't care. <laughs> Traveling ministry. Women of God. All this here, your wife is jumping up and down. If I tell you what is going on. Today's church. No, we have to recover the apostolic order, my friends. So that was why the day they found him talking to a woman, they were shocked. John chapter 4. They were very shocked because they don't see that. They don't. But there were three recorded close interactions Jesus had with women. Like that interaction with the woman of Samaria. All of them were in public because that's another thing. The strength of sin is secrecy and privacy. And people say this sin is so powerful, immorality. But ordinary six-year-old girl opens the door. All the demon will leave you. So if a six-year-old can cast that devil from your head, keep the door open and the demon won't have to enter your head. So some of you, you are canceling because deliverance ministries, the pre-deliverance counseling, post-deliverance counseling, and then it's that, you know, my husband does not perform. She is not doing this. And you know, man of God, you know, you are now my father. You are even my husband. You are everything. Uh, you know, please don't leave me, oh. The thing, you know, you don't know how this marriage is. And I don't want to leave because of Jesus. But, you know, but, but you hold me, please hold me. Hold me. Hold me. Oh, hold me. Oh, God, you are dead, though. Is Potiphar's wife. He said his destiny is so small, he doesn't even do anything. He's giving you a clue that I need I need some ministry, extra biblical ministry. <laughs> Give me my phone. I, I, I send this to Apostle. It is resource we are sending to our pastors. You know, we all are utilizing. One of us created this. His name is Pastor Fedmund. And um, uh, let me see if I can get, you know. We, he calls it treasures from translation. So they take different verses of the Bible, look at it from different translation. And this one is on Proverbs chapter 6. Let me read how one of the translations. If I call the translation, you put it up. Let them all see it. 
Proverbs chapter 6, the message translation. Adultery is a, brain, a brainless act. You don't have brain. You don't have sense. So destroying, self-destructive. Expect a bloody nose, a black eye, and a reputation ruined for good. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32 to 33. Did he put it up? A, a brainless act, so destroying, self-destructive. Whosoever commits adultery with a woman has no sense. Whosoever does this destroys himself. Another translation. An adulterous man will find disease and dishonor, and his disgrace will not be blotted out. Verse 32 and 33. This translation said, New Living Translation, the man who commits adultery is an utter fool, for he destroys himself. He will be wounded and disgraced. His shame will never be erased. How can a man of God not know the, about the sanctity of marriage? somebody's wife a man of God you cannot be trusted with people's wives again one, one lady met me many years ago you know in those days one million ah, you know where one place uncompleted building one million he wrote the check he held it to give me, I stretched my hand to collect the check. She held the other end. So I pulled it, she pulled it. <laughs> he said, Pastor, wait now, you are, you are in a hurry. Before you take the check, you need to go and warn my husband. Warn that fool. I say your husband is what you're calling fool. You see reflection principle. Do you see what is going on here? But she first wrote the check. Looking at our uncompleted beauty, where we were. He said, talk to him. Oh. I, I removed my hand from the check immediately. I knew who I was dealing with. I know. Just be, very proud. And when she finished, I just said, you need to go and see Pastor Sarah and two, these two other ladies. I have trained them. They know how to. They will circumcise you and bring you <laughs> He said, I don't have time for this. He said, no, 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 I, I don't want to. You know, I say you have to. He said, what about the check? I said, forget about it for now. When you finish circumcision, we'll look at that if he's still in his Hey, oh, wow. What happened this morning? Uh, let me consult first before I violate you. Apostle, I need serious counsel. I want to know how many minutes that that is. Fifteen, fifteen, fifteen. Pastor Ben, come. Please, can you get me another mic? Please, let's do this first. Let me give you one or two something on Absolo. Ah, okay, I will come again. Mm. There are two models of ministry. I want. I just want to do this in fifteen minutes. Please, can you read Psalm one forty four? Turn to Psalm 144. From verse 6, please. Let's, let's do this first. 
cast forth lightning, scatter them, shoot out thy arrows, and destroy them. This is David praying. He dared to Absalom when he went through all this. Verse 7. Send thy hand from above. Read me and deliver me out of great waters. These waters have swallowed so many people. From the hand of what? From the hand of what? Is spirit of Absalom he's talking about. Verse, 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 the next verse. Whose mouth speaks vanity. Their right hand is right hand of blush, of falsehood. Yes, verse 9. I will sing a new song unto the O God upon psaltery, an instrument of ten strings, will I sing praises unto thee. Then verse 10. Ah, it is he that giveth salvation. He repeats that. Go to verse 11 or 12. I want to be sure. Yeah, he repeats the prayer. Okay, read the prayer with me. One to go. Read me. Deliver me from the hand of strange children whose mouth speak vanity. And their right hand is right hand of falsehood. Verse, verse 12. Verse 12, please. That everybody pray this prayer for your family and your ministry. Want to go. That our songs may be as plants grown up in their youth. That our daughters may be as cornerstone. Polished after the similitude of the palace. Verse 13. That our gunners may be full. Affording all manner of store. That our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our streets. How many of you want that church explosion? You have to deal with the spirit of Absalom. I will deal with it whenever I come next. But verse, verse 14. That our oxen may be strong to labor. These are your pastors and leaders and workers. And that there be no breaking in nor going out. That there be no complaining in our streets. How many of you want that kind of ministry? Leadership growing, a lot of workers. And then the flocks are multiplying. They are multiplied. Thousands. How many of you want it? You have to sort out Absalom spirit. Get the book. But, but, but verse 15. Happy is that people that are in such a case. Yeah. Happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Can I hear a big amen? Yeah. Strange children. God builds his kingdom three ways. Hey, hey, hey. Why should I open up things so I can finish? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. At least the fun. God builds his kingdom three ways. Number one, he builds with truth, the word, revelation. He builds revelationally. When Peter got it, thou art Christ, he said, on this I will build my church. He builds with revelation. So God builds with truth. God builds with teachings. God builds with revelation, knowledge. Number two, he builds relationally. God builds with relationships. Especially the type of relationship called covenant relationship. That's why he put communion in the New Covenant Church, the New Testament Church. Third, God builds generationally. So whatever he starts, he doesn't want it to end in one generation. So that's why he builds through the father-son order. And that's what Absalom is about to destroy. The spirit of Absalom will not allow the system that guarantees not only multiplication, but continuity. When God gathers something, that spirit will want to come and scatter it. Or come and distort the order. So if he sets a wrong example, so that more sons will start following in that wrong example. Hmm. So the men of God labor, they won't see. And one of the things he does is to terminate those that will be the continuation of the mandate. Those that are next in line. There are three people you must never fight in your life. Number one is your father. You do it, you remove the root from your own destiny and you will collapse. It's just a matter of time. Never fight your fathers. Number two is your brothers. If you drink blood, if you take communion, if you have covenant relationship, if you have the same blood flowing in your veins, don't fight that person. 
anti-covenant plus uh, uh, anti-covenant activities and practices will lead to untimely death. Paul warned when people take communion, not discerning the Lord's body, it leads to three consequences. Spiritually, you will get weak. Something will anointing and the strength of God will begin to drain out. Two, your body will start being open to demonic attacks and sicknesses and disease. You will start falling sick. Finally, you won't live long. Third person, you don't fight. Don't fight your own son. When a father fights his son, the father suffers dishonor. Never you do it. Delegate it to other sons. I said I'm coming back again on this subject because it's serious. See how Jezebel has taken my two sessions. This one is very serious. Because the absolute spirit is exactly what God faced in heaven. That's what Lucifer did to him there. You know, they are called sons of God. Mm -hmm. It's the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of Korah. When it comes to your son, delegate it. That's why God delegated Lucifer to Michael. David had to delegate Absalom to Joab. If a father starts fighting his son, the people out there will wonder who the person that is losing his honor. The son later will perish, but the, the father loses his place. You know, can you imagine if you read about the fall of Lucifer and you hear that Lucifer carried the leg of the father? <laughs> and the father used his abada to cover his eyes. And then finally, as they were doing, and father threw him on the ground. Ah, God Almighty has won. How much respect will you still have left? Yeah? The nemesis of a son who dishonors his father, the answer is in the father's mouth. You don't fight. So all God did was speak five things. Okay, these are the five things you say, Lucifer. Okay, here are my five things. Because he's the one that has authority that his word will come to pass. Here are the five things, the five I wills of God. So don't fight him. Just do what Noah did to that stupid boy. But before you do, you have to discern and differentiate between your Peter and your Judas. Only do that to the sons of perdition. Because there are times Satan will be tempting the sons. He tempted Adam and Eve. He tempted Jesus. Even when there are mistakes, don't sentence. Because if you do, you won't have Peter to continue your ministry. He did that to Peter. Peter even took Jesus and tried to rebook, correct him. Jesus rebooked him, but he restored him. Because you see, there is a difference between your Peter and your Judas. There is a difference between... All the different mistakes sons make is part of growing up. But when you meet sons of perdition, they are absoloms. They want their father dead. In order to rise, they think they must destroy somebody else. Lucifer was not coming in heaven to play. Absalom was not coming to play. Judas did not come to play. What they do is betrayal. And the one that is about to come in the last days, the new Lucifer, I mean the new Judas, the new Absalom, the new Lucifer on earth, called the Antichrist, is not coming to joke. That one, sentence him with your tongue. Hey, 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 hey. But okay, spirit of Absalom, if you read the book, you will get all the things you need to get. But let's talk about principles of sonship. Let's see if we can give them. 
<laughs> we'll see if we can give them four. Which one do you want to mention, start with? You like the principle of correction, do it. Thank you, sir. Okay. There are at least revealed 24 principles of sonship. There are two models of ministry in the Bible. There is servant master, the apprenticeship model. There is sonship model. There are two different things. The apprenticeship model comes to you to learn a trade, serve for a season. God said a Jewish man can come and serve you seven years, but the seventh year is his year of release. In that year, you bless him in, and release him and all that. That's the apprenticeship model. And then he calls the man, my mentor, my master, the one that, but it's a sonship model. When it comes to sonship model, the relationship is lifetime. Jesus said, a servant does not abide, one, principles of sonship number one, a servant does not abide in the house forever because he, ha he has a day of release. It's a seventh year. But a son abides in the house forever. It doesn't mean he will remain living in his father's house. A day might come for him to be, but if wherever he's released, even if you commission him in ministry, he is still the extension of his father's mandate. Just because Jesus was brought down here, and this is the same earth he will rule for 1,000 years, does not mean he disconnects from heaven, which is the mistake of Adam. A son abides in the house forever. So that's why even if you go to America and raise a family, you keep extending your father's lineage. Many of you are called to be sons to this apostolic and prophetic mandate to be the extension of it, and this thing is going to go global. The, 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 the servant model is not able to sustain God's plan. And that's why he concluded the Old Testament and brought the new. Because the Old Testament gave him servants. The new gave him sons. But he left the two for us to know that there is a difference between Hagar and Ishmael and a difference between Sarah and Isaac. Which one do you want? Because the servant model, you will never get the inheritance. You can learn. You can get some things in the training and mentorship, but you will never get the inheritance. The inheritance runs in the family. You see the priestly order that that mantle showed them Exodus 29, 29. I think I'm correct. The holy garments of Aaron shall be his sons after him. You see how the mantle is passed? To be anointed therein. And to be consecrated. This month, whether it's priesthood, is passed down. Prophetic is passed down. That's why the one that got it from Elijah called him, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. All those sons of prophets that saw him as just mentor, they didn't get the inheritance. It doesn't mean you won't prophesy. It doesn't mean you won't. Which one do you want? Of course, it's not just an apostle I'm telling to remind me whenever I come here. Because this is an apostolic house where egos are incubated. They have an ancient temptation that must come. The same temptation of Absalom. Especially when Satan inspires one to set the wrong example. He will now tell the other son, eh. This is why there is a principle of the second son in the Bible. Satan always attacks the first son or the one that is first raised in power that is exposed and then to create that distortion. So God replaces him with the principle of the second son. That's why it's the second Adam that brought our redemption. The first one he took out. Look at the human family. He took out Cain. God wanted to replace him with Eber. When Eber died, he replaced him with Seth. Look at with Abraham. He, Satan took out Ishmael. God now used Isaac to establish the divine order. Look at Isaac's sons again. Satan took out Esau. God used Jacob. There is always the principle of the second. So if you're not the one, recognize. They are not giving you visibility. They are not giving you. Don't be numb. Grow sonship. Because that's where the future is. It's not the Lucifer that is flying as ark. 
Because sometimes that position of advantage they give them makes them lose their senses. That's why it's not the Old Testament that is the order, the eternal order. It's the New Testament. Even his priesthood was concluded. And a new priesthood after the order of Melchizedek was brought forth. Because he he broke up God's purpose and plan, messed it up. Many times the first to be promoted, to be exalted, to be given visibility, to be given advantage, it gets to the head. The spirit of Absalom hits them. I studied in Dahosa. I saw mighty men, that ministry. If you see men, and you know, growing Watching, there was even a time, even me, stupid me, you know, growing up as a teenager in the things of, I said, ah, this one, they are more anointed by Papa. Shut up. That's how the thing, an Absalom starts. Sometimes people that praise you out of your place. All those men, none of them. If you see giants, if you see the kind of unction, if you see the kind of men, like David's mighty man, God gave him those. If you see how many of them. They are supposed to give us at least 70 dahosas after he left. But it's the people that came from other places. Robert Kayanja from Uganda. Duncan William from Ghana. Bishop Oyerebo that came from Kanu. All those ones collected this thing. Pastor Chris that came from, you know. You, you look to see. I've studied other powerful mandates. Wherever this thing is not properly taught and understood. <laughs> we'll only take maybe one, one for you. Yeah. What's the principle of correction in sonship so that we can go? Okay. Thank you once again, sir. Um, the Bible says, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. So children are born, but sons are raised. One of the key principles for raising children to sons is discipline and correction. So it has training part, then it has the discipline part. So some people want only run training for us, but they don't want the discipline part. Yes, go ahead, sir. So, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, from verse 5, you can put it up. Let's just read quickly. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. As courted every son whom he received. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you or deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if you be without chastisement, wherefore all are partakers, then you are bastards and not sons. So you can see here. The Bible defines a bastard, a bastard not as a child without a father. There is no child without a father. Every child, including the ones we call illegitimate, have fathers. The fathers may be absent. Praise the Lord. A bastard is a child that lacked training, lacked upbringing. And one of the key elements lacking there is this issue of correction, Praise the Lord. So the, this principle states that a son accepts discipline and correction from his father. Because that is what enables him or her to turn out right. Praise the Lord. Please go back to the... That book. That, 
That book is one of the greatest gifts. I have seven of them I'm going to leave for the body of Christ because, and we have the mini books of it, about four of it. Find it outside. But I have written the real book. is 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 a serious one because there are 24 principles there. Somebody was even telling me to break it into volume two and one and two so that it would be easy for people. 12, yeah, 12 later, you know. And that's what they are trying to do. That's why I didn't bring it. Yes, sir. So one of the things revealed in this scripture, if you read up to verse 11, one of the truths brought out is that it is the love a father has for a child that makes the father chastise discipline. And when we say discipline, we're talking about correction, including flogging in terms of natural children now. Those are the things that produces a son out of a child. Praise the Lord. Now, so it is the same thing. When you come into the family of God, you come into the body of Christ, it is the same thing. It's family. And in every family, there is a father. And it is the duty of the father to train, to discipline, to correct. Now, what usually happens is that when people are corrected, so-called uh, maybe sons in the house coming up are corrected, some take offense. And some in that offense even leave. And whenever they leave, that person never amounts to a son again. Because son, a son is not just somebody who grew and matured. No. Praise the Lord. There are things, markers, that show that this person is a son. And these are some of the, the things we are sharing as principles. Hallelujah. So, what I will suggest to you, because since we don't have the time, go study the relationship of Jesus with his heavenly father. You will see all the principles of sonship revealed. Just like if you want to learn how to take care of your wife, you study the relationship of Jesus with the church and you find his roles, you will see what a husband is supposed to do. If a woman wants to know her role, the relationship of the church to Christ, you will find it the same way. If you study the relationship of the father with Jesus, you see the principles of fathering. And then, of course, other part tracks in the scripture. But if you study the relationship of Jesus to the father, you see the principles of sonship, especially in the book of John. A lot of them are revealed. Let me give an example, sir. I'm sure there's a scripture that people will read. Sometimes it confuses them. For example, where he said, call no man father. In Matthew 23, on earth, for you only have one father in heaven. Call no man master. It is called in sonship the principle of exclusivity. The principle of exclusivity said, you only have one father. You can have 10,000 instructors. Please show that place Paul was saying it. Is it First know, Corinthians, is it chapter uh, 4 verse 10? Verse 15. 15 verse 10. Please chapter show it. Chapter 4 verse 15. Okay, chapter 4 verse 15. Please show it. I write unto, unto these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. Yes, next verse. There is a warning here Paul was given. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you have not what? Do you know the number of people that have contributed to my group from education professors, uh, Harvard, all kinds of schools have been to? Do you know how many preachers I've listened to? How many books I've read? But you have to know who your father is. You don't change fathers like you change towers. You move to America, father changes to TD Jakes. You move to legacy, changes.
And sometimes it's not even the person that led you to Christ. Who is that person that took that thing to bring you up? Who raised you? Who has labored in your life? Be careful what you do with that man. I'll be back on this. We're not through with this. I'll be back because, you know. But thank you, sir. I'm so glad to be here. And thank you, First Lady. And thank you, sir, for the gift you have given us. God bless you guys. God bless you guys. <laughs>